Hello, today we're going to be looking at the SC10, an entry level printer from Lotmax. The printer has a build area of 235 by 235 by 280 millimeters, although the bed itself is actually 250 by 250 millimeters. It comes with a single extruder fitted with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and the full parameters can be seen on the screen. It uses belts and V-wheels for the X and Y axis, along with a lead screw for the Z. It also comes fitted with an internal quality 24 volt meanwhile power supply, a filament runout sensor, and an aluminium extruder. The enclosure design is very similar to the Creality CR20, but boasts a larger build area, a touchscreen, a 32-bit mainboard, and TMC2208 silent stepper drivers for the X and Y motors, and only requires six bolts for construction. On the SD card, they include their own reskin of Cura 4.2. As a slicer, it's very simple to install and pre-configured for the SC10. It has an easy to use interface where you just need to click on the folder on the top left to bring in your STL file, and then you can change your print settings on the top right. It's also worth mentioning for people looking to pick up the SC10 as a second larger format printer that the latest two stock releases of Cura also include profiles for both the SC10 and SC20 Lock Max printers. Onto the controls. The responsive touchscreen has a preheat menu for preheating the bed and extruder, and a close button to cancel the set temperatures and cool back down. A level menu that will move the nozzle to five positions on the bed, front left, front right, back right, back left, and then the center of the bed to aid with manual bed leveling. Then you have the home menu. This lets you set home all, or just the single axis of the printer, as well as disabling the stepper motors. The extruder menu lets you extrude or attract filament at three speeds and three different lengths, used mainly for purging or loading filament. In the settings menu, you'll find a button that will show you the firmware version that your machine is running. The filament button for automated loading and unloading of filament. The language menu for picking from the seven included languages. And back on the main menu we find the print button. This will display any folders or STL files on the SD card and can be navigated with the up and down arrows. So after leveling the bed and loading some filament, it was time to print the included dog STL file. This print turned out well, but there was slight under extrusion and the layer seam told me that I need to lower my retraction distance a little to reduce the blobs. Next I wanted to test the filament run out centre, so I started printing a bench sheet and cut the filament one third of the way through the print.
The alarm sounded and the nozzle parked itself in the front left corner of the printer, allowing me to change the filament and hit the resume button and the print carried on from where it left off. The transition of the layers was seamless, though I still needed to adjust the retraction settings and the temperature for this particular filament. So I set about printing a range of test benches in different brands of PLA to get some benchmarks. And when dialed in, I was able to get a beautiful clean Benchy print. Next I want to take advantage of the large build volume so I moved on to large prints.
Towards the end of this print, I noticed a couple of layers of under-extrusion that can be seen as missing perimeter layers on the top of the tower. By this time, I'd put a couple of kilograms of filament through the printer and saw on the run-out sensor that the filament had worn away the chamfered hole and was snagging on the groove. After pausing the print, I decided to bypass the sensor, but the sharp angles of the extruder shaved small chunks of filament as it was being extruded. So I drilled and tapped a 6mm hole into the run-out sensor and fitted a pneumatic coupling. And this fixed the problem for me. This was an early review unit, and I believe Lotmax have already fixed this issue by adding a brass insert to the run-out sensor to prevent this problem. Next I moved on to PETG and see how the printer would handle face shields. The bed is extremely adhesive and had no problem with keeping the print on the bed and found my best results were setting the print cooling fan to zero and sub 50% for more detailed prints. I was even able to print the stacked version of the Prusa RC3 face shield with only tiny amounts of stringing on the support that can easily be removed. This is exactly what I want to see inside a printer. Good cable management, that quality meanwhile power supply, a fused power connector, and an earth wire actually connected to the chassis of the printer, and not just relying on the mounting screws for the power supply unit like many other printers. Onto the 32-bit controller board. We can see the 2208s and the 4988s and the USB and SD interface and a Wi-Fi module port. Here we can see the 512 kilobit SMT32 chip and the 2208s for the X and Y and the 4988s for the extruder and the Z axis. These can run a little hot on a 24 volt system. So it's nice to see a powerful cooling fan blowing right across the drivers. Then we have a header for an off-board SD card port and this Wi-Fi module port. These ports are used for the ESP8266 module made by MakerBase. In fact, this mainboard is a custom version of their Robin Nano 1.1 mainboard. And I'm going to pop this module in whilst I have the printer open. If anyone's interested in an upgrade follow-up video, just comment below. So on to the conclusion. For an entry-level printer, you get a lot for your money. And I think people looking at printers like the Ender 3, it's also worth looking at the Lotmax SE10 too. Out of the box, you get a larger print area, a 32-bit board and silent steppers. And with a cheap upgrade to a magnetic bed, you can unlock the full 250 by 250 mm build area. A comparatively large build area compared to other printers in the price range. Making for an excellent printer for cosplay props or tabletop terrain printing. Now there are negatives. It would be nice to have seen a bed levelling system in place, the silent steppers for all the access, or an all-metal hot end over the common PTFE lined Red Reality style Mark 8 unit that has become so common. 
The website is also a little sparse, and at time of recording doesn't have the firmware or software available for download, but they have been quick to reply to emails and send any files that I've needed. But in this price range, it's an exercise in saving money, and this is where the Lot Max shines. It foregoes some of the modern conveniences for quality where it counts. I would rather see a brand name power supply, a durable metal extruder, and a 32-bit mainboard and silent stepper drivers on the X and Y out of the box, especially as this printer is targeted and priced at entry-level users, and is trying to be more of a product than a project. It won't necessarily be the best option for someone wanting to tinker and slap a range of upgrades or tinker with the closed source firmware, but for someone new to 3D printing, you could be up and running within minutes rather than hours. That said, there are some DIY upgrade options, and if you're interested in seeing some possible mods, just let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and thank you to Lotmax for sending me this unit for review.